Charles Leclerc has been given the trust of Ferrari to be the driver they keep rather than Carlos Sainz, and instead of him justifying that trust, the Monegasque driver has been beaten by his teammates in every race they have both participated in this season. Talks have started to emerge about whether Ferrari made a mistake by sacking Sainz and keeping Leclerc, but more than likely there is a pretty significant reason about why Leclerc struggles this year in arguably the second fastest car on the grid. Can he bounce back and how significant of a reason is this? Charles Leclerc has had a rather lacklustre start to the season, especially when measured against his own very high standards. And despite being typically exceptional, he's found himself trailing behind his teammate Carlos Sainz in every race, primarily due to issues in qualifying, an aspect of his performance that is usually solid. Leclerc himself has acknowledged this uncharacteristic struggle to fully exploit the car's potential over a single lap, reminiscent of a similar period last year which saw him miss out on a win at the Singapore Grand Prix. This difficulty in optimising performance over one lap seems to stem from Challenge's entire preparation, particularly evident in races like Australia and Suzuka, each presenting unique hurdles. While Leclerc excels in race stints, his slight disadvantage in qualifying indicates a need to refine his approach to tyre management and adjust the car's balance more effectively during qualifying sessions. After consistently qualifying behind his teammate Carlos Sainz in both Melbourne and Suzuka, where Sainz notably excelled, we noticed that Leclerc struggled to find the right balance with his tyres in qualifying sessions. Despite his efforts, Leclerc expressed frustration, saying it was giving him false hope that he had finished a good lap, but instead hadn't actually improved at all. In F1, even a small gap of 0.104 seconds, as seen at Suzuka, translated into a significant grid position gap between Sainz and Leclerc in qualifying. However, Leclerc's dissatisfaction with qualifying was contrasted by his stellar performance during the race, reminiscent of his remarkable single-service display at the 2020 British Grand Prix. And despite Ferrari's struggles with tyre preservation, Leclerc impressed with a brilliant one-stop strategy, finishing fourth at Silverstone. Leclerc's recent focus on improving his qualifying pace marks a departure from his usual strengths as he typically excels on Saturdays. Whether in Australia or Japan, Leclerc's race pace hasn't been an issue, highlighting the specific challenge he faces in optimising his performance over a single qualifying lap. But remember, it's not that he's become slower, which would indeed be surprising considering his reputation as a strong qualifier, but rather given the improvements Ferrari made to their car over the winter, aiming to prioritise driver feedback and to make it easier to drive, it's puzzling why Leclerc is struggling, especially when his teammate Sainz seems to be adapting well. It's worth noting that Leclerc is still extracting the maximum from the car during races, which indicates that Ferrari's objective of making the car easier to handle has been successful overall. However, the issue arises during qualifying, particularly in the aspect of tyre preparation. And despite Leclerc's familiarity with what constitutes a good lap and his ability to push to the limit, he's struggling to achieve the peak grip levels necessary due to the tyre preparation challenges. Historically, Leclerc has been a master of finding the peak of the curve to get the best tyre performance in qualifying, but his hefty, controlled aggression driving style does leave him open to suddenly traversing the curve and those occasional wild moments and crashes. That's if he can't modulate the big rear car movement he interjects with his steering inputs on the brakes in time. While the changes to the car have significantly benefited Leclerc in races, the uncontrolled variables like track surfaces and tyre behaviour still pose challenges, especially when it comes to optimising tyre grip during qualifying laps. Sainz, on the other hand, seems to excel in that aspect, demonstrating a superior ability to load up the tyres and extract maximum grip throughout the lap. So while Leclerc may be driving at the limit of the available grip, he's unable to fully 
quickly capitalise on it due to difficulties in tyre preparation, and this highlights a specific weakness in his qualifying performance compared to Sainz. Therefore, perhaps it's time to give Sainz more credit in this discussion, considering his adeptness in managing these challenges effectively. Despite missing a race due to appendix surgery, Carlos Sainz finds himself only four points behind Leclerc in the championship standings, showcasing a recent surge in performance, particularly evident in the past couple of races. Sainz's improved form has primarily been visible in qualifying sessions, where he's outperformed Leclerc. Claire. However, this upturn in performance shouldn't come as a surprise as Sainz has had similar spells of excellence throughout their four years as teammates at Ferrari and these fluctuations in performance are not uncommon with statistics showing that Leclerc generally has a slight edge over Sainz but the latter often proves to be a strong competitor regularly challenging his teammate. Sainz's underrated status in the Formula 1 paddock might not be solely due to his recent performances but rather a broader perception shaped by his past experiences, such as his time at Renault alongside Nico Hülkenberg. However, his consistent performance against top-tier teammates like Max Verstappen and Lando Norris, along with his current competitiveness against Leclerc, solidify his reputation as a skilled driver. And while he may not be at his absolute peak over an entire season, Sainz's talent and ability to challenge his teammates make him a formidable competitor in Formula 1. Sainz is having the better season and despite both Leclerc and Sainz having achieved three wins ever since becoming teammates at Ferrari, Sainz's recent performances have undoubtedly highlighted his growing strength as a prospect. However, Ferrari's decision to replace him with Lewis Hamilton for the 2025 season doesn't necessarily indicate a mistake on their part. Sainz's consistent high-level performance made him a strong contender for Ferrari's 2025 lineup. However, Ferrari's pursuit of Hamilton was driven by the opportunity to secure a driver of extraordinary calibre, and they all went out of their way in their efforts to sign Hamilton, recognising the potential he'd bring to the team. While Hamilton's arrival might seem like an upgrade overall, it's important to consider Sainz's current form. Mercedes' dominance and their ability to mask driver performances make it challenging to accurately assess both Hamilton and George Russell's performances over the past seasons. And although glimpses of Hamilton's capabilities were evident, such as his performance during most of the Suzuka weekend, it remains difficult to fully evaluate his performance within the context of Mercedes' dominance. In terms of off-track contributions and star power, the Hamilton-Leclerc lineup remains remains a blockbuster for Ferrari, and while Sainz's departure may seem like a downgrade on the track, Leclerc's higher potential compared to Sainz might have factored into Ferrari's decision-making process. Ultimately, Ferrari's choice reflects their ambition to secure the best possible lineup for future success. If Leclerc improves in qualifying during the course of the season, we might see him beat Sainz at the end of the 24 races, but as of now, he still struggles. The European part of the season is coming, where we go from street circuits to tracks like Monza and Spa, completely different setups, and Leclerc will have ample amount of opportunity to improve. It is of the utmost importance that he does, because it will give Ferrari the maximum amount of chances to at least make this season interesting enough for us as long as possible. The Chinese Grand Prix this weekend is the first one of those opportunities on a track that hasn't been on the circuit for years. Of course, it was post COVID and one that will pose a challenge for some of the younger drivers. And while this won't be the case with, let's say, Max Verstappen, Leclerc will certainly have it slightly easier because Shanghai Circuit is a track that suits Ferrari more than Red Bull. What do you think? Will Leclerc beat Sainz this year or will it be the other way around? Let us know down in the comments and we'll see you very soon in the next video.